temporary casino will open in River North potentially within days. This weekend, it will feature more than 700 slot machines, 50 gaming tables, a giant bar, cafe. The owner operator, Bally, says it's open to open Saturday, but still needs a final stamp of approval from the Illinois Gaming Board. Joining me now to talk about it, 42nd Ward Alderman Brendan Riley. That covers River North and more. He served as vice mayor from 2015 to 19 and now as president pro tempore and with all the turnover he's now one of the senior statesmen at city council alderman thank you for your time yeah, thank good to be with you first off alderman uh are you ready for what amounts to a pop-up casino on 600 <laughs> north wabash avenue between ontario and ohio are you ready for this uh, it's less about whether I'm ready and whether or not the city's ready. Uh, Alderman Hopkins and I, who represent this area, have raised a lot of legitimate concerns about safety and traffic circulation. We've been asking for a detailed plan for almost a year now since Mayor Lightfoot sprung this on the city of Chicago. Uh, and unfortunately, we've not gotten a lot of details. Um, we're less concerned about what happens within the four walls of the casino than we are about what happens outside those four walls and on the surrounding block. And the main concern here is that with all the money flowing through this facility, there's going to be a lot of um, incentive for criminals to come down here and test boundaries. And so um, we want to make sure that this is a safe experience for everyone in the casino and those folks who are doing business and traveling around it. Yeah, so let's kind of kick off on that topic. You have intimate relationships with the police department. Uh, you know, they've been mum to the press. I would imagine that's by order. Um, and I mean, usually car casinos are campuses. They're, they're so much more infrastructure. In Vegas, they're literally surrounded by moats. Uh, what are police <laughs> telling you, considering we're at a crisis point with crime? The Near North 18th Police District has reported yearly double digit percentage increases in robberies and aggravated batteries since 2020 and that could make a patron walking out of the casino a clear target for those looking to do ill which we know they are doing um what are police your soldiers on the ground telling you well i can tell you there's a disconnect between top brass and the rank and file who are actually mm -hmm. doing the work on the street uh, a lot of the rank and file cops are concerned this will be a magnet for more crime. Um, but we're hearing from, you know, top brass that this ought to be fine. And I suspect for the first month or two that the casino is open, we're going to see a very heavy police presence here uh, to serve as a deterrent. The question is what happens in months three, four, five, and six. And so that's my main concern. As you noted, we're struggling with, with bad crime stats downtown right now. Um, despite the great work the men and women of the police department are doing for us, but frankly, they're down 2,000 cops department-wide, yeah. and we see that. And so the concern, I think, for a lot of the downtown residents and business owners is, will this draw police officers assigned to beats in other parts of downtown to the casino at the expense of those other beats and neighborhoods? And so I think it's a legitimate question. I've been pressing the administration, this new one, which had nothing to do with approving this casino, um, to dedicate public resources, but also hold Bally's foot to the fire and make sure that they're providing private funded security to supplement the work the police do. Because frankly, the police are spread thin and every neighborhood in the city deserves as good a protection as the Bally's Casino does, if not better. Right, and it should be a Bally's issue. If you go to Las Vegas and you go to any of their properties, it's, it's their issue. It's not Las Vegas city issue. This seems to be like the preponderance of the shouldering of the safety burden is going to be put on uh, Chicago PD. I was going to ask you how transparent do you think the city and Bally's has been with you? You already answered that. You said you've basically been stonewalled. You and Alderman Brian Hopkins with the uh, second ward. Um, a little soliloquy here. This temporary casino will be there for three years, uh, maybe more. So Bally's, uh, the $1.7 billion River West Casino will be built at the Old Tribune printing site. So, so let's take a look at the long term here. According to reports, the Medina site, the pop-up casino, might bring in 55 million bucks in cash revenue each year, taxable. And uh, the real deal site will fund the police and fire funds, they say. Um, but it, it, it brings all the bad that can come with a casino. And the skeptic in me says, this, you know, this, this almost feels not like, but a la the parking meter deal you know a decade ago 
Mayor Daly successfully pushed through a plan, sold off the rights to the parking meter, funded, got a billion bucks, and that company has already made back its billion with a half century of pure profits to go. A big picture thoughts on this, not this weekend. Uh, is a casino a fix? Is it good for the city? I, you know, honestly, I'm not a huge gambling proponent. I'm glad the city of Chicago got a casino license. It's been fighting for one for decades. And my hope is it will help stabilize our police and fire pension funds. I think this was a missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are scratching their heads on the site selection. As you noted, this does feel a lot like the parking meter deal. Uh, this deal was cut behind closed doors by the Lightfoot administration to the exclusion of the city council. We were brought in the very last minute with just days to review it, very little information, very little discussion about financials. And this thing was rammed through in a matter of in hours. And so that's troubling to me. Uh, a lot of folks are scratching their heads saying, why aren't we using the, the underutilized sites near McCormick Place where the conventioneers right. go? Right. Why double down on a neighborhood that's already thriving? It doesn't make a lot of sense. And, and so uh, this should have gotten vetted uh, much more publicly. We should have taken more time, considered more sites. I think the entire process was upside down. And my hope is that taxpayers aren't going to suffer as a result. Yeah, I mean, so short term, it's like Medina doesn't quite make sense. Long term, you're wondering if we're getting enough bang for our buck and city what, you know, the what Bally's is going to get. Uh, Alderman, 42nd Ward, Brendan Riley, uh, City Hall leader, outspoken voice for his ward in the city. Thank you for your time, sir. Good to be with you, Brad.